Today we're going to take a look at a pretty cool program. Uh, some of you probably already know it, but it's free. It's open source. It's called OWASP Zap. And what this uh, program is for is looking for uh, bugs and vulnerabilities within your uh, software web application. Uh, the great thing about it is I'll repeat again, it is free and open source. has a lot of pretty, pretty cool tools in it. Um, you can change what type of attack you want to do, cross scripting, injection. You can do them all at the same time. You can customize that, and it'll give you a uh, it'll give you alerts, flags showing you how serious whatever the vulnerability is, and you can afterwards provide a uh, report. It's important to uh, note that automated testing such as this cannot replace the person manual testing. It's also important to note that as we as we do this today, we're going to use websites that are already set up for us to do so and that we're legally we're legally allowed to use. Please do not use these programs to go testing sites that you do not have permission to test. That is against the law. It's against the law. So before we get too into it, let's take a, a bit of a tour of OWASP. Sat now me, the way I like mine set up, I like to go straight to view. And hit show all tabs but just so you know here are quite a bit of tabs right web socket tabs active scan app spider all the stuff i like to just go to all tabs all on my tabs down there i'm going to show you now where you can change uh, the different types or modify the policies in order to control the types of scans right now set to the default policy if you click modify you can see that the scan policy has client browser information gather, uh, injection, miscellaneous, server security. If you look under it, it's showing you what types of uh, what types of tests can be done, right? Remote file inclusion, path traversal, traversal, pardon me. Uh, these are going to be really, really important because this is pretty common today, right? Cross-site scripted, SQL injection is what we all look out for. Buffer overflow, uh, not so, not as much as in the past, but all those things still out there. When we start talking about information gathering, protecting from leaks, you want to test for this? It's all right here. So we're going to hit OK because it's already set. Now we're going to go ahead and add our own policy. We'll probably still use the same policy as that. I'm just going to call it SecNet Hosting Training 1. And that is the policy that we're going to go ahead and use. And as you can see, it has the same as the default policy. We didn't change anything. Once we get started, where you're going to see uh, the results that is going to be in the alerts tab. That's where you're going to see a lot of your output, the flags and the vulnerabilities that, that we found. And if you want to go back to previous scans, then you go to a uh, history. We're in a brand new session, so a previous scan, I didn't save it. It's not in there. With that being said, let's have some fun. The site we're using, this is free. You may use this site. It's open for you to hack legally. The site is google groupspotcom I just call it google groupspotcom It's that simple. That's the one I recommend. There are others out there. That, uh, allow you to test and hack the sites. In this case, we're not hacking. We're looking for vulnerabilities, and we're just going to scan. So it's that simple. All of what we need is currently set up. If we had other sites that we had tested at the same time, those would be listed in a listing under sites over here. All we have to do now that we've selected what type of scan we want to do is attack. By hitting the button that says attack. See, very very simple. It's going to do get attacks and post attacks, right? And in, in a real life scenario, if you're a hacker, then your hack may depend on uh, whether their website does get or post attacks. So let's use an example. If you want to say you want to hide a, a link or some code behind a uh, image attachment, right? The brackets, IMG brackets, then that'll work for a get for a site that uses get but if the site uses post it doesn't do that it won't work because a uh, image doesn't uh, img doesn't invoke a post so 
you're going to have to know, you know, gather information, of course, as always. Find out what type of site, website you're dealing with. If you scan it like this, then you start to see my odds against. And because this site is purposely left open and unsecure, it's going to take quite a bit of time and it's going to find a lot in its scan because it's purposely there for you. But we're just going to go ahead straight to alerts just so I can show you what we're seeing here and what we can do with it. So right away, there's 11. I'm certain that there's more than that, but right away we can see 11. This one right here, kind of a big deal, right? There's no CSR, CSRF tokens. So there's no cross side request tokens. You need those tokens as a, what could happen vulnerability wise is a uh, cross site request forgery. Meaning I can essentially use your uh, the cookies that are already saved within your browser in the session that you already have to send someone and send someone a link and they click on that link and it's similar to this login with the same cookies and perhaps your bank or your hospital or whoever thinks that this is a good session because you're already still signed on this is especially if, if a person doesn't log off which people quite often don't like to do so it's essentially making you think something's legit that isn't legit right it's like uh if you're at a nightclub and you haven't actually been into that club it's like you coming out of there finding a uh, band for that club to wrap around your wrist on the on the ground and then going up to the uh security and saying hey i was already here security sees the band you know slightly off previously used and says oh you must you must have already been in come right in right cross site for forgery is, is a, it's it occurs when like the the attacker uh picks a target browser and the object is to get that target browser to send an http request to another website after that then you know I'm going to perform an authentic, if, if I'm the hacker, an authentication, some some way to valid, to make that valid and sent, to appear valid and sent by the target. And this does require like previous authentication. That authentication had to have previously occurred. All right, so let's move on to the, to the next one. Content security policy. Obviously a bad one, right? CSP header is not set. That's not good. Oh, by the way. They give you a description in OWASP about what all of this stuff means. They tell you what the attack means down here and what the vulnerability could be. Also tell you the solution. So it's pretty good when it comes to that. It doesn't replace people in manual scanning, but it's a good additional tool. And that's also free if you're just a uh, web builder with a small company out there and you want to test out the security of your code or the security of your website. The solution here is to make sure all your stuff has the... Uh, in that top header, X content security policy set. That isn't set, and you're in trouble. It's bad. Now, this cookie has no, uh, it's missing the uh, HTTP only flag. So, what these flags do, they're similar to attributes, but they, the attributes to an extent, but they're telling traffic where to go and whom it could talk to, right? HTTP only would be saying you can only talk to hypertext transfer protocol, but without that, you can communicate all kinds of ways. Um, if you added HTTPS, then that would only communicate there. If you look at uh, how websites are built, they start off with you, you that most of them are secure, but you know for a fact they're going to be secure in the cart. So that the reason for that is to stop uh, insecure or non-secure communications. Or requests from getting through to secure requests. And another cookie without uh, the attributes. So this website has all kind of uh, header issues. Header issues galore. And it probably has even more. Information disclosure. Suspicious comments which may help an attacker. So that's just on the inf information gathering side. These are comments within the code. That you don't want. <laughs> too much of a hint for a hacker but in a nutshell that is OWASP Z it's a free tool when you feel like it mess with it uh, again man we may do some we're probably going to do some exploits in the next video of some of these vulnerabilities since we're allowed to do so 
Now, here's the thing. You can only do legally. You can only do what's there and what's available. I can have this site in the ways that are available to me. I cannot legally go find another way to do so. That's their disclaimer. But go get your download of OS OWASP 